this is vibrant. I think that everything feels right. It's it's a nice feeling. Are you there alone or with others? My guide, who I met mm -hmm. at the start, is with me. He's not of. Oh, he's not human. Mm -hmm. So describe your guide for me. What does your guide look like? <laughs> he's. Um, it's probably what most people would imagine, like an ET to look like. Mm -hmm. He's quite. Um, he's not wearing any clothes, but it's not. That's no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, he's very slim. His skull is slightly more elongated than ours. Uh, his eyes are larger, but it's. His skin's kind of leathery. But it's not frightening or anything. So let's ask your guide what this place is. He says it's Atlantis. Atlantis, very good. Would you describe this place where you are right now? You said you saw a meadow. What else is there? He said this is a place that I come to and I need to connect mm -hmm. to Gaia. What is in this place? What's the importance of you coming here? What's here? It's quiet mm -hmm. and it's there's only the sounds of nature and it's where I can connect most strongly to Gaia mm -hmm. uh, to do my work. So let's find out a little bit about what you do when you work. <coughs> what is your work there? I work in the Temple of Healing. Mm -hmm. And there's various... Um, types of healing that go on. Uh, we work with crystals. Mm -hmm. We also work with plants, plants, um, plants, essence. Um, and the vibration, the energy that it gives. Um, we work with the earth energy itself. We connect to uh, the web of energy that is underneath the earth, it's just kind of below the soil, um, depending on what type of healing people need. Mm -hmm. So the different types of healing offer different, no, that doesn't make sense, the t different ways of healing offer, offer different types of healing. Mm -hmm. So as you are in this place, this temple of healing, I'd like for you to look at yourself there. What do you look like there? First, are you male or female? I'm female. Mm -hmm. I have um, a very simple white dress, I guess, but it's really, it's just really simple. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, people, um, that doesn't make sense, people, um, There is a hierarchy, but it's not position of power like we would think it now. It's not, it's not that egotistical. It's simply uh, the color that someone wears de de um, just shows how they work, the level they work at. Mm -hmm. So you working with this white dress? What does that mean? Um, I am high in in knowledge mm -hmm. and wisdom. Um, I oversee the healing that takes place. Um, and how many work there with you? Many, mm -hmm. many, many. Um, because we we don't just work to heal humans, we work to heal Gaia. Mm -hmm. And there's many aspects that that requires attention of. Um, so we work with the elements and we work with 
the water and the trees and the green life and um, people kind of specialise or they choose an area that they want to work in. It's not forced on them mm -hmm. um, if they feel drawn to it. Um, but I have knowledge of all, Very. hence why I am high in wisdom, why I oversee. Um, and yeah, I've worked for it. Very good. You work for <laughs> it. It doesn't just happen naturally. You have mm -hmm. to work for it. Very good. Um, but some are more attuned to a particular type of healing, but and some are naturally attuned to all, and I'm one that's naturally attuned to all. Very good. It's not an arrogance. It's it's simply as it is. It's, mm -hmm. and we are encouraged to follow what what feels right. Very good. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close that scene and mm -hmm. go to another scene in that same lifetime in which was very significant to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you'll be there. One, two, and three. Be there now. What's happening? Where are you? What do you experience? <laughs> There is a lot of destruction. Mm -hmm. What kind of destruction do you see? That people are being killed. Those who have the strongest connections. Anyone who has a connection to Gaia, mm -hmm. uh, to healing, to knowledge, you know, all that sustains Atlantis. Who's killing him? <laughs> men. Men. Are they men of Atlantis? See where they're from. Who are these men? They're not of Atlantis. But the people of Atlantis have let them in. Mm -hmm. What do they look like? Do they look the same? No. Um, uh, they, um, they are more, um, what's the word? They are coarser, mm -hmm. but, but not in a derogatory way, simply the Atlanteans looked a way and they look another way, it's like a different race almost. Mm -hmm. But they are um, more um, violent mm -hmm. and um, they think we have something that they should have. But it doesn't work that way. How are they killing these people? They are just physically killing them. <coughs> um, with weapons. It's just very crude, mm -hmm. the way that they're killing them. And they're just killing anybody that... Um, that is there. Mm -hmm. Where are you observing this from? I'm being taken out of the city through um, uh, passageways. Mm -hmm. Who's taking you out? My colleagues, mm -hmm. my... Tell me more. And we've been asked to take the knowledge with us. Mm -hmm. Not just us, there were... We knew this was coming, but we didn't... We didn't anticipate how soon so we've many of us no not many some of us have been given knowledge to take and hide mm -hmm. where are you hiding this knowledge yeah. far far away mm -hmm. how, how do you store this knowledge 
is in crystals. Mm -hmm. So are you holding a crystal? We each have a crystal. Mm -hmm. We all, and we all go in different groups, go in different directions, so that the crystals aren't close together, mm -hmm. that they can't all be found. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me where you are now. Look around you. Yeah. Oh, I am. Look around you. Where are you? Are you on a plane? A plane? Are we far? Mm -hmm. Or it's an open plane? You're high? And we're just... We're just trying to get as far as possible. We think we're being followed, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. We're not... Um, we are not... Um, designed to survive mm -hmm. <laughs> in these landscapes. But we, so we just keep on going and keeping away from people. Um, I feel that there is a place we're going to, but I don't know why. Um, keep okay, talking. so we, we've, we've come to the edge of a desert, but kind of with rocks and rocky outcrops. But we're really exhausted, mm -hmm. and um, we know that we can't go on for much further, so we know that we need to hide the crystals, and that we have done all we can. And so we, um, my colleagues, my, like my friends, we head towards a big rocky outcrop that's above the sand, and And we uh, climb a little ways up, and then we put the crystals in in the rocks. Mm -hmm. And what happens then? Well, we can't go on. We we we, we die. We're dying. We're dying, and that's okay. All right. So I'd like for you to go to the last moment of your life in that lifetime, mm -hmm. and tell me where you are. Where are you? You'll be able to see it as an observer. You don't have to feel it. Where is this place? What is this place? Just observe it. Detach from that body and see it. What happens to that body? We return to Gaia. Mm -hmm. And we we give our life force to Gaia, mm -hmm. and as we always do, it's the natural way. And she feel Gaia. And she honors us mm -hmm. by. Allowing life to grow where we die. Mm -hmm. And she marks our passing. She marks our passing. She honors us. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? I don't care about me. Mm -hmm. But Gaia, it will be hard for a long time. Mm -hmm. because of the changes mm -hmm. and because the people that have have destroyed Atlantis will not honor Gaia and they will not honor the land so what happens what do you decide at that point do you make any vows I am in service to Gaia mm -hmm. and What is it? Have you made an agreement with Gaia? About the land? I wish to 
remain in service to Gaia mm -hmm. when I am needed again. Okay. But we know it will not be for ages. So I'd like for you to see the passing of time as it goes. See yourself growing in that place, seeing the changes, feeling the growth. Tell me how that feels to be enrooted into Gaia. Hmm. What happens? I, th I don't recognize the land anymore. Mm -hmm. It's happening? like it's dead. The land has died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's just no connection. Where have you lost the connection? Let's find the origin of that loss. What happened? When did you lose the connection? When we died, when we saved the crystals, we knew, we knew that we would lose the connection. Mm -hmm. That's why Gaia honoured us before our sacrifice. <laughs> All right, so let's see what happens next. And we gave it willingly, we knew mm -hmm. that it we would be killed. Anyway. Mm -hmm. But the soul never dies, and I'd like for you to now to disconnect from that lifetime completely, <laughs> allowing you to drift and float away from that lifetime, seeing yourself now as spirit, as spirit floating through time and space to another time, another place, where there is more information about the disconnect, about the purpose of that soul, can continue to drift and float higher and higher and higher, connecting with your guide once again. Be there now. Tell me where you are and what you feel. I'm, I'm kind of floating, mm -hmm. and my guide's with me, who is at the start. I'm trying to find his name, mm -hmm. but I can't say it right. What does your guide tell you about that lifetime? <laughs> that the balance shifted. Why was that lifetime necessary? My strongest connection to my my soul essence, my role on the earth, why I came to the earth, was best represented in my work in Atlantis. And that work needed to take place in order for there to be people in the present day that can lead back to the connection with Gaia that we had at that time. Mm -hmm. Why now? Because it's the right time. Mm -hmm. So let's find out why this soul has chosen to now incarnate as the life of Annabelle. I'd like for you now to go to those guides, to that healing space. Where are you? 
Not really anywhere. Mm -hmm. Just kind of drifting around. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? Yeah, it feels cool actually. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's a place of of just non violence, non drama. Mm -hmm. It just feels very, very zen. Mm -hmm. So as you accelerate time and space, let's see if there's anybody there that comes to get you to the next phase. I'm with my guide. Mm -hmm. He seems to want to stay near me. Mm -hmm. So we have the lifetime of Annabelle now, mm. which began as a planning. I'd like to ask the guide to take this soul to the council that has the knowledge and information about this incarnation. Be there now. Where are you? Look around you and describe this place. I am uh, on Earth. Mm -hmm. And I am. Uh, it's very beautiful. Uh, I am, have trees around me, very old trees that are. Uh, it's like a council of trees. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, it's all about coming back to Gaia mm -hmm. and bringing the wisdom back. It's, it's as you are there in this council of trees. Do you have a form? I see me as myself in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand it that I chose. I was. I was told before I incarnated that this lifetime would be one where I could reconnect, uh, but that I would have to uh, um, shed the. Uh, I would have to shed the um, heavy baggage I right? mm -hmm. <laughs> accrued through. Um, just life, heavy life, uh, loss and grief and persecution, and that I would have to, I would have to be of a, a lightness before I could take up my role again that I had in Atlantis, and that it would be hard, but it would be worth it. So connect with those trees today, and let's find out what the council has to tell you. I don't know. I mean, they're so old. I just don't know if they're actually on Earth. They just—it's mm -hmm. like they've been around. It, it, I think they might be the trees that we became. Mm -hmm. That Gaia, we when we died, when we hid in the crystals, we became trees. So, as you're in this council of trees, do you feel that you're equal with them? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, some um, it's they're but they're like brothers and sisters mm -hmm. they're, they're it's like it's our time mm -hmm. it's our time to help I don't know how to explain it it's like this is the time where we can we have the opportunity to bring back the wisdom of that we had when we worked with Gaia mm -hmm. and that has been lost but there are, and there are other people around the world that that, that um, there are not many but there are people around the globe that are also being guided 
to this end to bring about the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, is the council able to answer some of the questions? Mm -hmm. Or do they suggest that another Del answer her questions? Mm -hmm. She wants to know why she is blocking direct guidance. Because the essence of my soul is to, the very nature of my soul is to nurture. Mm -hmm. And if I had been <coughs> allowed to remember <coughs> before the time was right, I just would have been killed all the time. There was no, there was no point. And as much as we are working towards returning to the Gaia state, where all life is equal, and where we nurture and care for Gaia and all life, there are those who don't wish for that to happen, mm -hmm. and who work to prevent that from happening. It's the balance. It's not good or bad, it's just balance. So they strive for continuation of <coughs> the world as it is now and continuing chaos and we are striving to return the balance to one of a Gaia state so there wasn't there were always essences of the desire to work with Gaia in many of the lifetimes that led to persecution but to to bring back the full knowledge would have, have served no purpose and also alerted the other, I don't really know what to call them, um, division mm -hmm. that we were preparing for this time. Mm -hmm. Now, is she still in danger of persecution in this lifetime? No, no, she's no. too close now. So if she is not in danger, why is it that she's been told that she is blocking direct guidance from the angels, from Gaia, from non-earthly beings? Is she blocking them? She's not so much blocking the angels. Are they communicating with her? Yeah, she's. she just needs to meditate more and and quiet her mind. She's not very good at it. How can she quiet her mind? She <laughs> says meditation is not easy mm. for her. Mm. She has her mind chattering all the time. Mm. Why is this happening? Well, she doesn't let herself be still. There's always something it needs doing. It's a habit. Mm -hmm. It's a habit. And it's easy to fill your time with stuff that you think can't wait, but it's not really that important. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Can I ask on her behalf, or a guide, or an angel, who will kind of slap her upside the head when she <laughs> needs to pay attention and make time for herself? Can she use that guidance? She has a lot of guidance, mm -hmm. but um, but for that in particular, to take time out for herself, for inner reflection. If she asks for a guide, one will will certainly be available for her, okay. but it won't always be the same one. Okay, that's fine. It depends on. Okay, we need Annabelle to start working in particular ways and the guide that is relevant to her type of work will be the one that appears. Okay. Is there anything now that she needs to stop doing and shifting directions on? Uh, it would help her to have some fun. Mm. She's too serious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She wants it so badly that her whole life she's just wanted this, this has just been drawn to something her whole life not knowing what it is so she's just so wanting to engage with 
I work with Gaia. Mm -hmm. um, but there has to be lightness to it as well. Mm -hmm. So she can't, she can't be too serious then? Well, less serious would be good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's her work is serious in some ways. It's serious, she needs to get on with it. But there is timing with that as well. So there is a time soon, soon she will know so much more and there's that has to be the right time. But she could help herself by allowing um, space for just peace, mm -hmm. actually, and not feeling like she has to do everything, mm -hmm. have to be on top of everything all the time. It's, it just doesn't matter. Stop being a perfectionist and have more fun. Would that help? Yes, like she feels she has to complete everything before she could do this, mm -hmm. um, but all the other things are never completed, they're just ongoing, so it's that constant push of never achieving what she thinks she should be because she's never completed what she thinks she has to, okay. but she doesn't have to complete those things, they're irrelevant things that she thinks are important, but they're not. Good. So the only healing we need to do that today is for her to shift and relax more, have more fun. And be patient. Mm -hmm. I know that everything has its time and that we are all working hard to to create the right environment for her to do her work, mm -hmm. as with many others. But it can't just be when she's ready. It's and and there are things that have to fall into place mm -hmm. before and that, so she has to wait for those things to happen. What about her root chakra? She's been told that she has a closed one and that she's been disconnected from Gaia. Is this a fact? Or is it in a different lifetime? Well, Annabelle's had some really hard lives like many people and so sometimes in order to cope you you don't really engage with earthly life it's easier not to mm -hmm. so certainly part of it is the connection with Gaia and that's been necessary so that will change soon and there will be a reconnection and it will be very obvious okay good and that will help alleviate Annabelle's constant feelings of that there is something she needs to be doing but she doesn't know what it is mm -hmm. and the constant push to find out what it is. Okay. Is the root chakra balanced and spinning now? Take a look and see. It's not active. It's why, why is that? Because of the connection or this connection is not really the right word, but it's needed to be not it's difficult to explain. It's needed to take a, a step backwards so that the disconnection has been encouraged so that Annabelle didn't pursue this sooner than she needed to. Okay. Will this chakra begin to function again once the connection is made? Yes. Is there anything she needs to do to activate it? Or will it happen normally? It will happen. Okay. Very it will good. happen. It, there okay. will be no mistaking it happening. Mm -hmm. Good. So not to push for it because it's <clears throat> there's no point. Now, she tells me that when she was a child, she felt the sadness she couldn't explain, and it went on through her whole life. Would you tell me what this sadness is all based on? Uh, <clears throat> she has always felt um, uh, sad because of her disconnection from Gaia. Mm-hmm. And because of her sensitivity in this lifetime, she has felt it so much more. Mm-hmm. Like when you get really close to attaining something, it's like you're 
senses become heightened. Yes. And this lifetime has been about bringing Annabelle to a point where she can shed her heaviness from her previous lives, mm -hmm. resolve past hurts, uh, so to allow healing, to allow release, to put her in the right lightness and vibrancy to reassume her role. Mm -hmm. Well, that but that sadness, okay. that awareness has always been there of something missing. It's such an integral part of her soul essence that it has always been a part that has felt to have been missing. So if she starts putting more joy in her life, does she need to focus on the sadness? Can we balance that? If she, if Annabelle did things for pleasure, for fun, that allowed her to, that were earth-based, so gardening or mm -hmm. crafts, or, she knows all this, she's waiting, she's waiting, I'm not quite sure why, mm -hmm. um, she knows what she needs to do, okay. she knows it already, she knows that to do crafts and grow and anything that connects her would be good mm -hmm. and is that why she now is taking up doing some little gardening and farming <laughs> yeah. is that why she's been drawn to that yeah to get rooted well life will change life mm -hmm. is going to change mm -hmm. and and people will will be living very closely with the earth mm -hmm. so all of the interests that are coming to her will be relevant in some shape or form to the human survival but it will be different it will be different to how how it has been it won't be the drudgery the like the really hard work that that is being seen in history mm -hmm. it, it will be the connection will be so much more profound that our understanding of the human understanding of how to obtain what we need will be so different and our, our relationship to all aspects of Gaia so you know, the water, the air, the earth, the plants will be there will be a connection so it's hard to explain because there's nothing in history that's comparative I can't say it will be like when you when you did it during this century, it will be returning to that. There is no recorded history of, of the state of being that people will be returning to. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a new... It's, it is a, a new a, an evolution on this level. There will be other... The people that have chosen to remain will be evolving with this, this earth. Mm-hmm and her evolution, there are other Earths that will be going through different evolutions and many souls will be leaving to evolve with the different Earths in different dimensions. Will we be choo choosing the Earth that we go to? We've already chosen. We have. we have. Are we living on that Earth now? Well, I am living on the Earth that I need to be on. Mm -hmm. Annabelle is on the Earth she needs to be on. Okay. Like she and others not huge amounts will be staying as caretakers of Gaia mm -hmm. to support her evolution and all life. But she is. Annabelle is. Yes. Her husband is. People that she will be meeting will be. They will be forming um, small communities mm -hmm. where of like-minded people. And they have all chosen to stay. They've all chosen to stay. It will be hard. It will be mm. really hard for a time. But they know that there will be um, a time of great healing and an entering of a new light age. <clears throat> They've been shown this, not just Annabelle, others too. Many, many people will be leaving the earth, and we see it as dying. Mm -hmm. Each and every one has chosen their path and will be moving... Okay, not all will move. Those who choose to live in fear mm -hmm. will create 
Mm, it's hard to explain. <sighs> there are many, many different scenarios for many souls to move on to. It's not a case of just living and dying. So, but each has chosen their, willingly chosen their, their path. So no matter how disastrous it seems on the earth, and it will seem that way, mm-hmm. no matter how many lives are lost, seen as lost, they're not lost, they are have chosen a different path to staying here. Now when hearing that, people may feel very scared that they're going to die, that their children and family will be wiped out. Yes. And that is a natural fear as a human. Mm-hmm. Just like when we saw that past life as this, this priestess mm-hmm. who was persecuted. So how can we explain this dying of so many people? Are they going to be going to a different place? Or just going back to source? What will happen to them? It's hard to explain to people who have not really touched on their what we would call a spiritual connection Mm -hmm. and that is most people Mm -hmm. so we see and of course there's fear I mean this whole planet is fear and there are many what we see as as past lives are not past they're all happening at the same time Mm -hmm. there are many earths happening at the same time many scenarios being played out at the same time and as a soul we have the ability to split ourselves over many many earths Mm -hmm. you know it's not just one life at a time Mm -hmm. so we can choose we can choose where we move on to Mm -hmm. now as a human if you're not in uh, if you don't have an understanding of that or the soul existence some people i mean many people don't believe there is a soul and and that's their path there's no criticism it just as it is Mm -hmm. and each soul is on its own individual stage of evolution so there's no judgment so it's it's hard to say to people don't be scared because naturally they are Mm -hmm. and they will be and they will worry but there will be no changing the outcome Mm -hmm. if they feel drawn to move to a small community and start growing their own food do that Mm -hmm. if they feel drawn to live the high life in Hawaii or anywhere do that your paths be true to how you feel because it will not change what your soul has already decided for you Mm. So we as humans do not, do not choose, it's our soul that chooses. Well, we are our soul. Mm-hmm. We are mm-hmm. our soul and, and our... <clears throat> we make many decisions in our life and they have to be our decisions, but our main goal is set for us. Our main learning lesson is set for us before we incarnate, mm-hmm. at each incarnation. So we can do many things with our lives that we choose to do but there will be some events that happen mm-hmm. now this soul that is the soul of annabelle what was chosen for her in this incarnation to bring back the the teachings of mm-hmm. um to bring back the wisdom of gaia to bring okay. back the wisdom of living with gaia in a way that's not not recognized now in harmony there is no killing there is no harm to life we are caretakers so we mm-hmm. we support the evolutionary paths of each and every life form we support it and we help to support the environments that allow it to live that oof, aloof, uh, evolutionary path we don't we don't constrict it or confine it we don't kill for our own needs we don't interfere Mm-hmm. We are caretakers, <clears throat> and we main, we work to maintain the balance. You know, life forms die out, but that's evolution. Mm-hmm. So we don't stop that. 
we work to create the right environments for, for them to, to fulfill their evolutionary paths, and that includes humans. In this path that she has taken, will she be able to heal what right now modern medicine is healing? Or will it even be needed in the future? No. Well, healing, mm -hmm. it will be very different. Yes. It will be very different. And it's hard to explain to Annabelle right now how different it will be because she's not yet experienced the return of her knowledge mm -hmm. that will help her to understand. When will she receive this knowledge once again? <laughs> she asks that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really soon. But she, she wants to be tapped in to where she has it. Yeah, she will be. It's very soon, but there are things that need to be put in place for her, and we can't give an exact date. It, it depends. There are variables. It may not be the exact date if we gave it to her now. It may move by day. We just can't give her an exact date, but it's very soon. It's imminent. Mm -hmm. And... Um, be patient. Uh -huh. <laughs> so have more fun and be patient and the information will flow. That's all she has to do is mm -hmm. just relax because she hasn't forever. I mean, she's just so much tension. And she knows this, but it's, it's so ingrained, it's difficult for her to mm -hmm. remember what it's like not to feel so tense all the time. Mm -hmm. And we understand that. And what about the health needs of different life forms? How will she know? Because they will tell her. Okay. Yeah. So when she sees something that needs assistance, she'll know how to take care of it? If it's appropriate, definitely. Mm -hmm. Some aspects of ill health can be evolutionary parts. Mm -hmm. So there will be circumstances where people, not just Annabelle, the, the caretakers who stay on Gaia, um, there are codes of... Um, not interference, but there are levels of support that caretakers can offer, but also we need to allow... Okay, so for example, if there were a, a huge fire and it wiped out, there was the potential for it to wipe out a species, then that would be allowed to happen because that was the evolutionary path of that species. However... If there was another species that was impacted by the fire, that it hung in the balance whether they, their species would survive or not, we would be allowed at times to give aid and assistance to support mm -hmm. their growth. If It's hard to explain because it, it sounds like we're interfering, but there are um, we're so connected mm -hmm. that... that Gaia determines through her actions, through the land, through the sea, through the air, through the physical upheavals, what species are challenged or not and, in, and how they are challenged because that creates evolution. So Gaia creates the environments for species to evolve and we are informed but not like verbally mm -hmm. when we can support and when we have to allow that species to to die. I've been told that on Gaia there is free will. And it seems like there's a lot of interference. Is At that the true? moment. Mm -hmm. Who's interfering with Gaia? Who's assisting and influencing Gaia? Well, there are many working towards keeping fear, keeping suppression, mm -hmm. um, keeping domination, removing free will. Mm -hmm. from from the world because that is the state that some beings prefer to live in mm -hmm. and humans are very easy are very easy to manipulate and have become very easy to manipulate through fear and suppression and our lives are completely manipulated from birth you know, we're told what to wear, how to speak, how to act. We're told mm -hmm. what our lives will be, school, mm -hmm. college, marriage, children, that sort of thing. And it's very easy to control. We have no control over most people, over energy needs, over our food, you know, all the, all the, the basics of life, the crucial aspects of life, we don't have control over. So the feelings of global disempowerment, powerlessness to change, 
the fear of what happens if we don't have these things it's just everywhere and yeah. and some beings thrive on that and they so they encourage it they put people in power who who disempower people further they create fear and um and that's what's been happening it's, it's been building up for centuries so those Atlantis. are those are the ones um that are causing the fear who are the ones that are influencing on the positive side because uh, that that seems to be also getting into people's free will also yeah mm -hmm. yep yep there are many who are they there are many it's quite complex there are many beings from different okay so different dimensions have different beings different different levels of light different levels of physicality mm -hmm. different uh, you have an intelligence that is like a cloud mm -hmm. you have an intelligence that would be like a rock mm -hmm. you know, there's just such um, it's just fast and so beings who have they have evolved to a state where they make lighter conscious choices so like there are beings who are who are urging the earth to return to a conscious Gaia state mm -hmm. and there are beings who for them that's not a natural way to be that's not a natural way for them to live so for, for beings that can thrive on nurturing and caring there are beings who thrive on um, discord and fear you know they, it's like they feed mm -hmm. in a way it's like a, a drug almost like a hit and so they encourage that they create create scenarios that, that encourage that so and because there are so many people now so many people who are disempowered um, and disconnected from it's been insidious and it's been it's this has been eons in the making and and when Atlantis fell that was like the final um, not, not focus of goodness but it was the final disconnection from Gaia and from that from that disconnected state they could then slowly slowly feed into um, disharmony and fear and disempowerment by putting in place um, people and communities or organizations that that themselves fed off disempowerment and fear so it's been a long slow downward spiral you could look at it that way mm -hmm from the Gaia state perspective, yeah. from their perspective, it's been great because mm -hmm. they've been just increasing, increasing all that they need to feed them what they want. Are but, there, go on. Are there any in the spiritual community that are disempowerers also? Oh yes, definitely. How do they infiltrate and disempower those who are trying to go on a different path I don't know if I'm understanding you right mm -hmm. there may be some that say they are on a spiritual path oh. that are here to help Gaia that are mm -hmm. here with many crystals mm -hmm. and but they may not be here for that mm -hmm. they may be here just for messing with mm -hmm. the environment Mm. Yes, there are many. Mm -hmm. So what can Annabelle do if she encounters any of those? Oh, she will know. Mm -hmm. She will know. And it's kind of like snakes in the grass that can bite you when you're not expecting. Yes, and there's always that risk. Knowledge that will be coming forward soon, not mm -hmm. just to Annabelle, mm -hmm. but to others. Yes. Will will change, could change, the way that people, okay, it could change where they look to for their essentials in their life. Mm. And so they will no longer feel 
so disempowered. So then there are many people who, especially, not especially, there are many people who work with so-called healing or Mm -hmm. um, passing on certain teachings that they want that power. Yes. So just as there are those who generally want to help, generally want to assist and support, there are those that use their position to feed their ego. And Mm -hmm. But what will happen is that as this knowledge, that knowledge of the Gaia state returns, Mm -hmm. and it will not be all at once, but there will be some big downloads, um, the people that receive that information will, will, will just know. Mm-hmm. They will just have the sensitivity and the connection to know. But also that so much of the way that the future will work on Earth will be through intention okay. and heartfelt intention. And if people don't have the wholeheartedness, then they won't be able to experience the changes that can be made through working with wholeheartedness and with intention mm-hmm. because their heart won't be in the right place. They won't be able to manifest it. Well, she's been told recently that all humans will be, be able to provide all of their needs through intention. <laughs> if they intend warmth or heat or, mm-hmm. or, or, or light. Well, is this true? Yes. Will we be able to manifest through intention? Absolutely. Are we doing that now? In some respects, mm-hmm. but but blindly, okay. maybe, would be the right word. Some people, there are very few people on earth who are really aware of the power of intention and how to use it and how to manifest. So some people are like, they have tools and they don't know how to use it. They're just we misfiring. All, we all have the tool mm-hmm. and there are so many that we've come so far from when we used that Mm -hmm. that we no longer even believe that it's possible Mm -hmm. so so when will she Annabelle be able to acquire this knowledge of how to use her intention to truly manifest her life it will be soon when she receives her her download from Mm -hmm. be from Gaia because she's not quite ready what's holding her back There is still heart healing to be done. Mm -hmm. What's going on in the heart that needs to be healed? What's there? What's holding her back? What's in that heart? Fear. Mm -hmm. Where is it coming from? Would you go back to the origin, please, of where this, this pain in her heart. Where did it originate? Because she's tried to do good mm-hmm. in many lives. She's tried to heal, she's tried to help nature. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not just been her persecution, it's been the destruction of those that she's been trying to help as well. Mm -hmm. So she fears that if she embraces her power, that she will somehow make things worse for the people or for what she's trying, Mm -hmm. what she's trying to protect. Mm -hmm. Because it's happened so many times. So I'd like to do something that is beyond what Annabelle may imagine herself doing, but she has access to all of these lies, has she not? She does. All right. So I'd like for her to see herself in a gathering of all of her past lives that have been hurt and allow her to bring them all together into a circle, all holding hands. (sighs) 
And as she holds hands with all of these personalities, let's bring in the light, like a huge column of light in through their hearts and begin to heal their hearts. I'm going to place my hand over her heart and let's extend that to all of those and let's bring out all of that pain. As I draw out the pain of persecution, of misunderstanding, of not being honored and respected for the knowledge of having to live in fear. Let's draw out from all of those hearts all of that pain and send it up into that column of light to be healed. And feel as that light comes in into their hearts the healing to begin, the peace and the safety of being one, supporting each other, rather than being split. Connecting once again to their source, the one that created all of these personalities with love. Feel them holding hands and begin bringing them all in together as one. Becoming one huge column. Feel them all melting together, all of the knowledge, all of that love. Gaia, the universe, feeling peace, supporting each other, knowing that now they are no longer alone. And as I remove that, and send it up. Feel the peace in that heart. All supporting each other. No longer being by themselves. Look inside her heart now. and tell me what has happened. She felt responsible. Many, many deaths. Mm -hmm. Not just people, but trees, and land, and animals. Mm -hmm. And she just felt so guilty. Is there room in that heart for guilt with the work she needs to do? No, she understands now. Mm -hmm. She understands. And she doesn't feel alone anymore. She's always felt alone. Mm -hmm. What about now? No. And no. now that she is at one with all of those who have had access, can she feel the connection now? She feels the connection with, with all who have passed mm -hmm. with her in previous lifetimes, on this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And she, we all won. She, she feels that now. Very good. And that she didn't fail. She felt she failed mm -hmm. each lifetime when she tried to help Gaia. But she was doing what she needed to do in that lifetime. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any failure. And now with the strength of all together, how will she be able to work with Gaia now? With all of that experience. She'll pass on knowledge. Mm -hmm. For those who are interested, for those who want to live a life of no harm and in deep, deepest connection with Gaia and all life, she will pass on the knowledge mm -hmm. to those who are interested. Very good. Now, she has been connected to guidance through automatic writing for about two mm -hmm. years now. Mm -hmm. And she's been receiving information about the coming changes, about the evolution of Gaia, and her role in that. Would you tell her who it is that's channeling this? The historians. Mm -hmm. Where are these historians 
from? Are they from Gaia? No. The Astor Astorians. Oh, the Astorians. 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 A S T. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing A S T U R I A N S. And why is it that the Astorians, Astorians. are assisting her? Mm. Mm. They evolved mm -hmm. many, 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 many mm -hmm. <laughs> millions of light of of years, light years, very, very distant past. Mm -hmm. They evolved, and they too had to go undergo evolution that we are now. Mm -hmm. And they chose to support life. Mm -hmm. That was their desire. And in doing so, they chose to connect with the Gaia state, the Gaia, not experiment, but the Gaia um, evolution. Mm -hmm. So because she is so concerned with Gaia, is that why they connected with her? She's been asking. Okay. She's been asking for many years how she can help stop the suffering mm -hmm. and how she can help Gaia mm -hmm. because that is who she is that's her soul essence that's her her desire to move back to that state so it was easy to connect with her okay but we had to wait until she was light enough mm -hmm. to allow us to work through her and that's taken actually not that long she thinks mm -hmm. it's long because she's impatient <laughs> but it's not been that long um, it's been hard but She's very allowing of the writing now. Mm -hmm. Well, says she says sometimes thinks that it was her higher self that's writing mm. and giving her information. Mm. Does she have that also? Definitely. How can she tell the difference? Well, can she, she knows. Oh, okay. She knows already. All right. She practically told you herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's just after confirmation, and that's that's fine. Will this deepen into direct contact with her? Gaia. Gaia's Gaia Gaia, definitely. <clears throat> Gaia. Right. She will return to the Gaia state. Annabelle will return to her role of caretaker mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wisdom keeper of Gaia. That doesn't mean anything to her right now. Mm -hmm. Does she, is she going to have to lose her body to do that? No, okay. no, 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 no. She's staying. She's staying mm -hmm. in the physical. But okay. there will be changes to all life that remains. There will be a raising of vibration. As Gaia evolves, all life will have to evolve with her mm -hmm. to exist on her. <clears throat> the animals will just do it. because and, and the life, the green life, you know, that are connected to Gaia, they will just do that because that is... They're so connected to Gaia. And humans will, but... There will be a point where there will be a coming together of all all life mm -hmm. and and a great healing for Gaia will come of that. It will be an intention of, of healing. For Gaia to heal, she needs to <coughs> be cleansed. Mm -hmm. Now this sounds really harsh. This will sound really harsh, but human beings have reached a level now, a state of, of existence where there cannot be a change that will benefit Gaia. There has been a tipping point reached. So the only way that Gaia can survive is to cleanse the earth and that means to remove most of humanity. That doesn't mean, as we talked earlier, that doesn't mean Okay, it does mean that a lot of people will die, but that doesn't mean that they will not be moving on to another earth. They may be moving on to an earth that is pure light and love, and their soul has chosen that for them, mm -hmm. for their evolution. Mm -hmm. There will be some souls who have done horrible things on the earth, that have lived life of doing terrible things to people, to the earth, with no remorse, no feelings of um, connection, 
no responsibility for their actions and they will they will know the consequences of their actions at their time of passing mm-hmm. they it's not being judged it's simply that there will come a time it's hard to explain there will come there will come a time of choices and some people who have performed horrible acts will not be able to live with the fact that they've done those so their outcome will be different to people who have lived just you know most people normal lives doing normal things having a normal life with a normal family they've lived the best life they can um they will move on and but some souls will create a world of their own making mm-hmm. that will reflect the decisions they have made in this life that have not been that have been selfish that have have been uh terrible decisions for for life so these new earths that there are out there when we die do we go there or is it just going to be a shift and we're there will be it people will go at different times okay it's not going to it's not like a mass exodus no 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 it's not it's not going to be easy from a human perspective we know we have short lives mm-hmm. and and terrible things can happen mm-hmm. and and that and we feel them as terrible because we we experience them on the human level mm-hmm. but when we die we we return to our soul to our spirit state mm-hmm. and our understanding is much greater of our soul's goal of our soul's path so we look at a lifetime of suffering or a number of lifetimes of suffering as as not lifetimes of suffering we see the mass lifetimes of learning because they they're not the greater part of our soul selves they form part of our learning experience but we don't become that suffering we are light we are all light so we we take that learning into ourselves but we don't take the suffering with it we don't take the fear mm-hmm. the negative aspects that we feel on earth and this is why earth has become so heavy because there is so much fear and negativity that has been supported its growth has been encouraged mm-hmm. through deep disempowerment the way we live so many 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 people who who leave this earth are not bad people they're just people who have been in the the throes of the lives that people live so they it's not they won't go anywhere bad their souls will have chosen their next evolutionary earth to live on for their next learning experience mm mm-hmm. Um, it could be as a lighter being it could be as a heavier being it doesn't have to be as a human so mm-hmm. it's difficult to say well most people who die will go to a lovely place it will be a different place but it will be a place that they've chosen okay good. so they they may feel fear and not saying all will before they pass that's not what they will Now, she has been working with the dying a lot. Um, and she's been using essential oils. So, can you tell me a little bit about what she needs to know about this? It will come. Oils. There, you could consider them the life essence of a plant. Mm-hmm. So the plant takes in sunlight, which is lightness, and the oils are almost like the lifeblood of the plant in some respects. So they're they're full of light. They're full of high vibration. And when a soul departs the body, mm-hmm. the soul is anchored to the body in. <clears throat> through the chakras mm-hmm. 
the chakras allow different experiences, allow the each incarnation different experiences, and and those experiences are mirrored in the chakras. So the chakras always develop with each incarnation, which is how people reach spiritual attainment. Mm -hmm. They have had many experiences, they've worked with their chakras, they've made decisions that have helped them to evolve through their chakras mm -hmm. and to make more conscious decisions, you know, over many, 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 many lifetimes. It's mm -hmm. not an instant thing. And, and you get very enlightened souls like the Jesus figure, mm -hmm. the Buddha figure. Mm -hmm. Many, many, many people who who um, are heart centered. So when we depart the body, when we leave the body, when it's our time, it it supports the soul to not be um, fearful mm -hmm. or, or scared or regretful or any 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 heavier emotion. Mm -hmm. So that working with the oils helps to helps the soul to almost disconnect from the chakras hmm. in a way that allows it to have a peaceful um, okay, for example, okay, this will make sense to Annabelle now as to why she's being shown the thing she is with helping people, helping souls that are in a transitional state. Mm -hmm. So she's shown She's shown an end of life, not always her own. Mm -hmm. She has been helping others. She has sh she's shown how they die and then why their soul has not moved on properly into what we would call the light. Mm -hmm. So it is when we move into the light, it's where we can... It's where we are in our true state and mm -hmm. we can choose to move on to another learning experience. Um, or we can choose to stay for a while and do whatever we feel like doing. It's, it's a, it's our true state. So, but if people don't, if people have died in a in a frame of mind with an intention that there is no, I don't deserve to go to heaven. I don't, or that they don't even know there is one. They don't know that there is a light, or they have an emotion, a feeling that is keeping them connected to the earth. Something they don't feel they've completed. And they don't. They don't go to the light because they don't. They're not ready in some aspect. Mm -hmm. They don't see it. And you can't make a soul go into the light. It has to be a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. So by using oils, specific oils for specific chakras, to it, it eases the soul's exit. Like just like it's almost like undoing buttons. Like mm -hmm. okay, so we're going to take off a coat. So I'm going to take off this button and that button and then that button and then that button, and then and then you can shrug the coat off. So we shrug off the human body in our in each lifetime. But if we can't undo a button properly, we can't shrug the coat off. So we we kind of stuck half in half out. So what working with the oils allows is for us for the soul to disconnect gently and peacefully from each chakra, from each of the connection points, so that it can transition fully into the light. Mm -hmm. And what Annabelle has been doing is gaining some experience with the oils. A lot of knowledge will come to her once she regains her knowledge as a wisdom keeper, because mm -hmm. part of that, it is a natural process. Every person who passes is has assistance because it's such a uh, deeply nurturing and enlightening time. It's a time of forget can be a time of forg great forgiveness, great healing, um, great understanding but if it's not supported correctly that it doesn't always happen so there's many souls left not not completing their their journey into the light so the oils help with the with a real peaceful help any help resolutions so that soul can depart fully mm -hmm. it's a natural way it's, it's how it should be done and and people are so disconnected from death now and that they see it as a bad thing not as a you know, it's a rejoicing, it's a returning to our natural state of joy and lightness and and, and so many people are scared of death and and um, there are many horror stories about you know, if you don't live like this then you go to hell and it's fear, it's all fear based. Mm 
-hmm. It doesn't happen like that. So these essential oils, is this something that she's going to be working more with? Absolutely. Will she be teaching others? She will, but people will come to her. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a... Um, like a formal training? No, it won't be formal. Hmm. That's an interesting way to put it. Each person will develop their own way of working. Mm -hmm. However, the, there has to be respect for the process of life and death. There has to be that understanding. There has to be respect for the oils. They are a life force. Mm -hmm. There has to be, there have to be the right attributes in a person. So the right people will know, they will be drawn to it like Annabelle's been drawn to it. Mm -hmm. But this system of, of supporting the soul is, is not widely known on the earth at this time um, and not in this particular form mm -hmm. so um, there will be a number of people that come forward men and women but they will take their place within communities um, their role will be to sit with the dying to bring back the honor of sitting with the dying mm -hmm. Um, as it used to be, and as it is in, in indigenous cultures where they respect the dying. And, and use the oils to release. And use the oils. These oils will not always be available because of the coming changes, but there will be, such will be our connection with the plants and the green life that we will be working with them in a different way. Now, can we also assist those who are attached to bodies, souls that have attached to them? Mm -hmm. How can Annabelle work with those? Is that something that she can work with? Anybody? Okay. Annabelle is of a high enough vibration that she can ask them to leave and mm -hmm. they will do so. Okay. That's an interesting question because there are many, mm -hmm. but it's one thing to understand, it's one thing to know that there is a soul attached and it's another thing to know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. And some souls can be, you know, not so nice, mm -hmm. they're scared, maybe just not great, have been great people, mm -hmm. not really understanding what's going on. So. I would suggest that if someone is new to working with souls or spirit, that they seek someone who has more experience. Mm -hmm. If they don't feel happy with the protection that they put up, mm -hmm. if they don't feel, if, if in any way they feel uncomfortable or um, get a feeling that something's not right with the situation that to not to go forward with it themselves, to mm -hmm. seek help. Because there are many people who um, are experienced in the work and who are of a high, higher vibration who can work well with helping other souls or spirits depart. But that's not everybody. Mm -hmm. It's also respectful to the soul that's here. If there is a soul that is attached to another person, and it, it may be that they're attached to their light, it may be that they're, they're attached to the dramas or, or their life, mm -hmm. that that's how their life was. There are so many reasons. It's it's also how to respectfully work with mm -hmm. the soul that's attached. It's not about just trying to cut them off or um, just get rid of them and let them go. It's mm -hmm. it's assisting them, assisting right. them into the light because that's they need to move into the light for their own health. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be done negligently. It can be done carelessly, the cutting of souls, and that's when the damage is done. So it has to always be re respectful to oh, the soul. Always, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And we, we're not to judge a soul's reason for being there. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, every soul is different, but but all life, even on a soul level, should be treated with respect mm -hmm. and, that, and, and with, with heartfelt intention for its well-being. 
um, and with love if possible mm -hmm. absolutely and and with the best of intention for that soul's health um, but to move into the light is is the best thing you can do if that's possible I always um, ask for guidance when I do it mm -hmm. can you explain what's in the light There are many different levels to what you pass mm -hmm. onto into the light. There are many different levels of, I guess awareness would be the best way because it's not physical. Awareness, consciousness, many different le levels where different consciousnesses are working at. So a soul will... Passing into the light is a, is a doorway. It is where one has truly left the, that incarnation. Mm -hmm. So, and then once through the light, can choose to reincarnate. Mm -hmm. Can choose to do a number of things. Not every soul reincarnates one after the other. Um, it may be that they have work to do supporting another soul on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's very complex. It's not necessarily how we see the black and white. You die, you go to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's very simplistic. So, so we have choices as souls as to how we want to move forward. It may be that we have lessons we've learned from a particular lifetime that we, we require some healing, some time to just mm -hmm. take, absorb into ourselves. Um, so, but what we do return to is a state of light and love mm -hmm. and that is very hard to describe on a human level because we don't I guess a, mo a parent's love for a child would be the closest you could come mm -hmm. to that but there are many many factors that even between parent and child affect that mm -hmm. that love those factors aren't there as a, as a soul in the light, we are we don't feel fear or yeah. it's no, no, heavy, no conditions. So it's unconditional. Mm -hmm. It's unconditional. There are no, there is nothing to change that. Is there any possibility for a soul going into a false light? Is there such a thing? No. Okay. No, no. There's not. Mm -hmm. There's not. Because there's many that don't want to reincarnate when they're here. And they feel like they've been put through a reincarnation machine. Humans don't want to reincarnate mm -hmm. because of... They don't want to be here. Uh, Does it they just... don't want to be here in this life. Yes. Well, your life's hard. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I... Why would a soul choose to be in this life? Now, Annabelle has seen many of her lifetimes in which she's been persecuted. Mm -hmm. And she may have thought... When she was persecuted, I'm not coming back to this. Hmm. <laughs> As a human, you would think that. Yes. Absolutely. But once you pass and return to, say, the light for ease, mm -hmm. um, you don't perceive your experiences in the same way. Okay. You don't take on, you don't take with you that those feelings of, desolation or mm -hmm. devastation you they are human emotions mm -hmm. you what you take from it is what did i learn mm -hmm. what did i sacrifice what did i what did i learn from being drunken and mm -hmm. beating my wife mm -hmm. what did i what do i take from that experience i'm not saying Everything wants to grow, everything wants to evolve, planets, stars, yeah, each has a, a life, a lifespan, a life. Grass wants to grow, trees want to grow, and the soul's the same. So we learn more from what we would call harsh experiences than we do living lives of pure love and joy. What do you, love and joy, great, but what do you learn from that? You don't learn how what you're willing to do to save somebody or what you're willing to do for someone you love or what sacrifices you're prepared to make and and 
how hard you're prepared to work to accomplish something for the greater good. All, all these things you learn through hardship. So what is it that she learned from that lifetime on Atlantis? What was the purpose of that? Such a difficult lifetime. So emotional. The fall of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Why did she need to be there for that? Well, she needed to know who she was. Mm -hmm. She needed to know that she had knowledge that was needed. She needed to know that life is not all joy and light, mm -hmm. that there is a balance, that things change. There's not, it's, there's not always harmony. It's um, yin and yang. Mm -hmm. Yin and yang. So the time of Atlantis was profoundly connected with Gaia. But there were aspects within Earth that resented that. That's how, that's how that seed grew. That's how Atlantis fell. So you can only do your best. Annabelle could only do her best as a caretaker of Gaia. Mm -hmm. but, but there are other considerations. Mm -hmm. Gaia wants to evolve. She wants to grow. And that was part of her evolution as well. Mm-hmm. Now, in this evolution that she's going through, mm -hmm. she seems to be having a lot of health concerns. She's, her digestive system has become very sensitive to foods. She doesn't even know what to eat anymore without her body complaining. She has constant pain in her back. She has neck issues for a long time. She feels weary sometimes. And her left side is giving her problems. What is going on with her body? If you would do a scan on it and report back to me what's happening with her body right now. Mm, okay, so where to start? Okay, Annabelle has held on to much tension. From before the time of her father's passing, her throat relates to her connection with Gaia. She's not been able to speak her truth about our most profound connection with Gaia that mm -hmm. everybody, every living person should be able to feel. Mm -hmm. And she's wanted to, and she's tried to, and she's been persecuted for it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of her persecution has involved hanging. Mm -hmm. So there has been a real uh, strangling of her you know, deepest um, feelings of um, wanting to connect and wanting to help others. She doesn't want to stick her neck out. Mm -hmm. That's why she gets her back neck. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to stick her neck out. She's worried if she sticks her neck out, she's going to die. Mm -hmm. If she sticks her neck out and talks about it and discusses it, tries to uh, open people's awareness. That's what that's about. Well, she's sticking her neck out today, isn't she? Yes, <laughs> she is. She's close. She's very close to realizing. So does she need to hold on to that noose? Any longer. There will be no persecution in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Could you remove that noose from her etheric body? It's gone. Thank you. Let's check the back. What is the constant pain in the lumbar region? 
moving forward. Mm-hmm. What's keeping her from Again, moving? it's connected to Gaia. Mm-hmm. N- nurturing. It's the nurturing. Stepping forward back into that role. She's denied... She's denied the feminine aspect of herself because she can't nurture. She she can't have that nurturing connection with Gaia, so she's cut off her nurturing mm-hmm. um, hips, the pelvis, the female reproductive organs. Never wanted children in this lifetime. It's it's been a um, a divide. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been quite a tomboy, kind of likes guysy stuff, woodwork. Um, Woodcrafts, mm-hmm. you know, um, making fires. Just so you know, there's been a ever since she was young, fighting with the boys and mm-hmm. couldn't connect with the female aspect of humanity, like mm-hmm. babies, toys, dolls, all that sort of thing. Um, it, so there's been, but she needs to move back to that. Mm-hmm. She needs to move back, and there's this conflict. So is that the left side of her mm-hmm. that she's denying? Or she's denying. Yeah, I think there's fear. There's also not knowing if it's the right time. Mm-hmm. A lot of this will be alleviated when she re-establishes her connection to Gaia, and it is very soon. I know it's frustr- It's been. Fr- we've been telling her to wait, and it's frustrating for her because she doesn't know when. But it's it's very close and. So much of what she she has questioned in her lifetime, her feeling of never fitting in, of not being able to relate to people, her feelings of uh, rejection, Mm -hmm. all relate to her inability to connect with, her inability through many lives and to connect with Gaia, and so rejecting that aspect of herself, that nurturing, that... Mm -hmm. um, So can today, can we do a nice hug of both sides and allow her to meld her masculine and inner and her feminine side together. She needs to accept that there can be both mm-hmm. the balance between both mm-hmm. and yes, we can do that now. All right. So when she is ready to accept, allow her to give herself a big hug, melding those two together. Bringing them to balance. Accepting herself as both. Allowing the nurturing of her feminine side. It's done. Very good. Can we seal it with a hug to herself? (laughs) Very good. Thank you very much. And as she moves that energy through her now, is that why she was lacking in energy? Or she has been feeling very weary on deep levels, not motivated? Not feeling like she had any reserves, mm. sluggish. Despair. Mm-hmm. What really, is all that about? Despairing of ever connecting again. Mm-hmm. Despairing of the world changing. Mm-hmm. Despairing of ever feeling whole. And able to... Reconnect to her true soul state. Mm-hmm. She's been looking for a long time, searching for a long time. So, if it's true that she is the caretaker and wisdom keeper of Gaia, would she not be able to connect with that knowledge knowing that it's going to happen? It hasn't been the right time. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been the right time. We've needed her. <laughs> We've needed it to be this lifetime, 
-hmm. But in this lifetime, she's needed to work at healing her heart. Okay. And she's almost there. Almost. Is there anything else she needs to do to heal that heart completely? Love herself. Mm -hmm. Love herself. She doesn't... She doesn't have a good high opinion of herself. Mm -hmm. uh, like a failure, never accomplished anything, never stuck at anything. Because she's been searching. She's never found, so she's ca carried on searching. But it's made her feel a failure. Mm -hmm. And um, not much use. You know, what do I do? Nothing really. That sort of thing. So she's been telling herself this a long time. If she focuses on embracing, bringing things into her life that she enjoys, that connect her somehow with nature, for the time being, that will help. She will just feel joy and peace. Mm -hmm. And then her time of reconnection is, is close. Very good. And that will change everything. Good. Everything. What is her digestive issues? She's changing. Mm -hmm. She's becoming lighter. Okay. She needs to eat foods that are natural, unprocessed. She's doing well, but, um, you know, she likes a coffee. Mm -hmm. She likes sugar. Um, so she's got a little bit of catching up to do with her gut. Her gut needs some support. It's irritated. It's been like this for a long time. She's doing well, but she needs to really, really give her body a break. Mm-hmm. And she's not really done that. Is there anything else that she needs to do besides cut out the caffeine and the sugar? Everything that doesn't agree with her. Okay. She knows what that is. So her, her gut is telling her. Absolutely. It's no longer um, supportive of mm -hmm. her evolution <laughs> to take in these, ingest these substances. So if she does so, she's going to feel discomfort. Mm -hmm. So, so her gut is talking to her. <laughs> it has been talking to her for ages <laughs> and she's been ignoring it. But it's uncomfortable and she's, she, she wants to be open to Gaia and she, when she knows that she has to sort her diet out. Mm -hmm. She'll get there. Mm -hmm. We don't see uh, trees drinking coffee, do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't, and mm -hmm. no, we don't, and and humans didn't used to. So, but mm -hmm. it's also it creates a different state. It's a it creates a different state in the body, and that's not one that's um, conducive to being lighter of vibration. It lowers the vibration. Mm -hmm. So she's her body is her, she is wanting to move away from anything that lowers her vibration because she's trying to raise in vibration, so it's mm -hmm. creating disharmony. Okay, good. Mm. What are these blocks or issues in her chakras? Are there any? You said disempowerment. Right. Disempowerment. So many, many lifetimes of mm -hmm. disempowerment, of frustration, including this one. Mm -hmm. So... Hmm. Can we heal that today? Some, mm -hmm. some aspects, but again, some much will be healed when she is reconnecting with Gaia. Ah. It's because the, it's, the, the disconnection with Gaia is integral to everything that's mm -hmm. been going on here. So until that changes, she can support, she can mm -hmm. boost, but the profound change will come with, All right. with the reconnection. So what will you be using today to help that chakra? We'll be going to use the sun's energy. Mm-hmm. This is something she can do herself, though. She's been shown this. She mm -hmm. was shown this in a meditation. What is the visualization that she needs to do in order she to... She simply pictures the sun, like beautiful heat and light, and she just draws it into her solar plexus, mm -hmm. and she just feels the, you know, the strength of the sun, like a flower taking mm. in the sun. That's, that's all she has to do. Beautiful. Um, she was told this ages ago. We all need reminding. All right. Any other chakras that are affecting her? We talked before about the root chakra. Mm, that will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. But not, not today. 
grounding is is good yoga she does yoga occasionally that's good um if she could do it more often that would be better mm -hmm. um for her grounding that would support the root chakra at this time and also help her to be a little more grounded mm -hmm. she's doing a lot of automatic writing at the moment it's all very a bit mind-boggling at times mm -hmm. so it would be good for her to ground yoga would be good but it'd also be really good when she was grounding doing the yoga to, to focus on her root chakra and, and grounding that too mm -hmm. is there anything else that she needs to do to bring her to that point where she can help Gaia Just relax. Mm -hmm. Relax and laugh more and have fun, more fun. Mm -hmm. So fun and patience <laughs> is the order of the day, isn't it? Yeah, she's not very good at those. Mm -hmm. So now that she has her feminine side, mm -hmm. the nurturing side, will that side help her with having more fun? Will that help her be more creative? It will help her feel better mm -hmm. more um what's the word she's just felt out of balance for so long it's mm -hmm. uncomfortable and mm -hmm. it's it's um distracting okay and it's hard to relax when you feel wrong mm -hmm. um so it will help her to relax um but also to em embrace to appreciate the the joy that can be found in um, creating, in creativity. Mm -hmm. It's her, her, her feminine creativity aspect, which she's, she really enjoys but never really um, indulges. So hopefully it will, it will help her to feel that's a more easy doing that. Very good. Mm. Now I'd like to ask, what is the reason why Annabelle was brought here so far from her home to come here today? What because she, she wanted confirmation. Mm -hmm. She likes confirmation. She likes to know. She likes to be sure. And has she received the confirmation today that she needs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that she did not ask that you would like to tell her today? No, we've been giving Annabelle so much information through her automatic writing. Mm -hmm. She has done really well with her past life healing. Mm -hmm. She's very intuitive and she has all the answers she needs. She's simply impatient. So came here today wanting confirmation. that she's not making it all up like she asks herself sometimes mm -hmm. but also I possibly whether there would be more of a timeline given to her but that's not possible mm -hmm. other than be patient and it will be soon good and the but, one the ones that I was speaking with today is that her higher self or the Astorians or her guide or a combination? Both. Both? Both. Okay. Good. What else would you like to say? Anything else? I would like to say to the people of Earth that the world seems to be becoming a much darker and fearful place and that this will continue, but to, to try to trust that all will be well and that they will stay with their loved ones. Whatever happens, they will be with their loved ones. They will not be separated. And to really try to take that knowledge into their hearts because 
fear will only make it worse. And we are never disconnected from our loved ones. It's hard, it's hard for people. It's really hard for people at the moment with so much fear. But they can choose to indulge in the fear and embrace the fear or they can choose to find another way and live in the love they have for their family or their work or their whatever they choose to do that they love. If they can keep hold of that love, that will sustain them. Is there anything else or are we complete today? We are complete. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah, wow. Really chilled. Mm -hmm. How does <sighs> your body feel? Really relaxed. Mm -hmm. Do you remember everything? I do. Mm -hmm. I think I do. I say that. <laughs> I was very conscious of what was going on mm. when it was being said, and I was trying not to be. I almost thought I was being a bit invasive. And Sitting did in the back feel... seat? Yeah, back, I'll do a bit of back, street, back seat driving. That's mm -hmm. what it felt like, but I don't think I was. No, I don't think you were. No. no. It, there was, um... I think there was a lot of eavesdropping. <laughs> I am nosy about. Well, so <laughs> yeah. am I. Yeah. I do the same thing, but it does come out very, very easily. So you okay. have a very important mission here. Yes. But you've been told, hey, chill and have fun. Yes. And be patient. Yes. You're doing what you need to do, and you'll be connected with whatever. Did you realize your, the issues with your body? What were they all about? No, I didn't know that. How does your body feel now? I feel like I need a really good cry, mm -hmm. but it's also the understanding of what has been the cause of them, mm -hmm. and with understanding comes release, so right. I feel that I almost want to have a big cry about relief, right. yeah, that feels really good, because I've been trying so hard, so many different ways of healing, with the issues that we talked about, and I've never been able to, whether I haven't been ready, Oh, I mm -hmm. just haven't had the knowledge to resolve them. So with my heart was really... How um, does your heart feel now? Does it feel bigger? Does it feel better? I feel really like I love everybody at the moment. <laughs> That's a good feeling. It's lovely. That's wonderful. Because I haven't felt that in a while. Mm -hmm. And also to love everybody no matter what they're doing and just to get on with my work. Yeah. That's all I can do to make a difference. Mm -hmm. People are not going to fit into your agenda. You just have to allow them to be yeah. who they are. But I, I, I felt very conscious mm -hmm. when we were talking about the future Earth changes, about mm -hmm. how, how, understandably, how people can be really worried about it, yeah. and especially with regards to family. Um, but you were told at the end... There's not going to be separation of families. Not as we know it. Right. But right now as humans, that's the only way that we can understand it. But that's the pe people's biggest fear, is being separated from their parents, from their children, yeah. from their spouses. You know, they judge yeah. and they say, hmm, they're not on the same path, so are they going to be left behind? Yeah. And we were given really yeah. reassurance that that's not the case. It's not how we perceive it, mm -hmm. but it is difficult to understand if you don't know that. Right, right. I mean, I've been told my... Perhaps I'm not going to say that. That's okay. So do you think that this is something that was meant to go out to the world? Well, do you think it would help? People are always very interested about I Gaia and Earth changes. There was nothing personal, really. No, no, there was, there was nothing on a personal level that I'd be concerned about. No. Um, what I'd be concerned about is whether it would create more fear about... I didn't actually say what the changes would be, but... No, it doesn't. That's just a perception. Mm. I, don't mind, I don't mind it going out. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the part it. about the essential oils was really good. Mm. That was interesting. About, yeah. It talked about how you, you work with the essential oils to release these oils. Yes. Stars. How lovely. Mm -hmm. And that you could be able to teach other people that. 
pass that knowledge on. Mm -hmm. That's an important one for people who are in hospice care or things like that that are healers. And there are um, there are people working with oils in that way, mm-hmm. but slightly different. Yeah. So it's just I mean, the more that knowledge is out there, the more people can connect with the soul and and not be scared of dying. It doesn't have to be scary. Well, that's what basically the bottom line was. It should get back to that where dying is. It's just so natural. It's, it's just natural. It's, it's just a celebration. embraced, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It should be. You did great. How long do you think this session was? I have no idea. Get a mental feeling. It didn't feel very long at all. How long did it feel to you? Um, oh my gosh, 50 minutes maybe. 50? Mm. Mm. We are on right now two hours. Oh, okay. Okay. Where does that go? That's a long, lot more. Did I sleep in between? <laughs> Did I have a snooze? <laughs> That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Time is a That's little different. That's incredible. I'd never have said that. And I've seen other people say it on their videos as well. And I've always thought, how bizarre. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it feels. I flew by. <laughs> Bless you. So, You're Annabelle. just beautifully petite, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so this was a very beautiful session. Mm. It was, and I so much of the information I actually already knew, mm-hmm. but and I, there was a part of me thinking, oh, I know that. Am I just so tell everybody sorry. how it is that you get this information? Right. So. Um, I do automatic writing and Mm -hmm. that's where I get most of my information about um, my future role Mm -hmm. with Gaia, about what is going to be happening with the earth Mm -hmm. um, in this lifetime and the changes that will be made and what will happen to people. So I've been getting more and more information as I'm also told that the point where I will be receiving a lot of knowledge. It's like they've been drip feeding me, so I don't really freak out and think, oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. There's one no way I could, I would be that, right. whatever that is. And also there's no way I want to think about that happening to the earth. So rather than freak me out in one go, they've just been slowly drip feeding me. So mm. I will just feel like I want to write. And then I will furiously write about 10 A4 sides. A4 sides. I don't read it. I don't know what I've written. Then I don't want to read it. I'm tired. I get up the next day and then I read it and type it up so I can actually read it properly. Mm, you um, do type it up. And it's so really, it reinforces it. Absolutely. And I use it as a guide because, mm-hmm. and what it does is it acclimatizes me to what I'm being told is going to happen. So mm-hmm. things that would have made it maybe freak me out a little bit maybe a year ago, now I just accept are going to happen. And then mm-hmm. something else, I will be told something else. I'm like, ooh, okay. Um, and then I read it and I think about it and I mull it over and I go, okay, yep, got that on board now. So I've accepted my role as I'm told it will be yes. and what I need to do and just um, coming today was confirmation of that and also um, trying to be, I've been told I need to be as light as possible, I need to be as wholehearted because we humans will be using, on the earth, will be using our intention to create things that we need through our intention and a whole heart. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have a whole heart, we wouldn't be able to do it. So I've been told I need to be lighter. So hence my diet changes and um, having fun and being frivolous and- More fun. More fun. More fun. Because I do get a bit serious about this and it's- mm. Well, a Um, lot of people who are doing this work feel that they need to be very serious and really, I mean, if you look at animals, like animals have fun. They're doing kooky stuff. Yeah, they do. All the time. They do. And we need to be more like nature. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it gets serious when you have to feed yourself. But then after a while, you know, go out there and have fun. Mm. And you were told more fun and more patience. Yeah, because it lowers your vibration. Right. It's all about vibration. It's all about yeah. lightness. So to take things out of your, um, so to make the changes that make you lighter so um okay alcohol unfortunately you know you can have a drink but maybe not have three every night Mm -hmm. Um, it lowers your vibration essential oils raise your vibration so i don't actually enjoy alcohol it makes me feel sick so 
every now and then I'll treat myself to a beer or something but then I use an essential or spritzer around me to raise my vibration that's how I that's how sell, I get around it do you sell these things I don't mm. because I'm not qualified okay and I um, I douse for, for the oils so it's very so guided. tell everybody what you do for dowsing what do you use for dowsing I use a rose quartz pendulum mm -hmm. um, I can't even remember I belong to a spiritual development group and we were introduced to dowsing um, and essential oils and I loved it so um, I also did um, intuitive healing I'm qualified in shiatsu and reiki and mm. a number of other things but I worked intuitively so any number of toning drum work mm -hmm. chakras auras meridians all that sort of thing um, past life healing mm -hmm. um, and I would use my pendulum to douse if there was an essential oil not to I never put it on the person it was always working within the aura and the energy because the essential so oil not putting it on them you're just no. putting it over them yeah wonderful mm. now if somebody wants to get a hold of you can we give them can we give you their information if they contact us sure that way it's up to you to discern yeah. whether or not yeah. to contact them yeah. we don't like to give out personal information mm. of people who are not in business for this but if mm. they have a question and they wanted to contact you, sure. we can give you their information. Sure, I have no problem with that at all. All I would say is that these are just my experiences, mm -hmm. my guidance. Mm -hmm. um, I have chosen to go with it because it feels what's right for me, mm -hmm. but everybody has their own right. individual path. So exactly. whatever you ask me isn't necessarily what's right for you. It's, it's her path. And it's the same my as path. my path is my yeah. own and not necessarily mm. what other people do. So we, I can guide, but mm. it, I have to follow my own guidance, inner guidance. If, if I'm being told, don't do this anymore, mm. I can't do this anymore. Mm. It's not that somebody told me mm. that I just, just don't feel it anymore. No, that's true. But if the work that I'm being asked to do is, is very much working with um, Gaia's energy web that covers the earth, that sustains all life and bringing that back into balance as with many other people around the globe. So there's, there's people in many countries providing a refuge for all life during the darker times ahead um, and, and living a life where there is no harm to any life. So Wouldn't that be beautiful? So if anybody's interested in learning more, I can always keep you updated on what I'm learning because eventually I will be, whatever I learn, I will be passing that on so other people can make that choice if they want. And where do you live? What area of the, of the world do you live in? I, <laughs> a very wet one. <laughs> I'm in Cornwall in England. In England. And we're soon, we're looking for a small holding early next year um, to create a place to um, set up to do our work from. Um, my husband's along on this journey with me so um, we're both really excited and we've been told many times now that it's really going to kick off early next year so we're sort of thinking okay well that'll be interesting yeah. but but the emphasis is to whatever knowledge we have we we pass it out willingly and freely um, that's great yes it'll be interesting yeah I still don't know 100 percent what that means but and you said you knew most of the stuff did you feel like you were hypnotized how did it feel it didn't feel like and that's how hypnosis feels. Really? That's how it feels. Mm. When you are in a hypnotic state, it feels very natural, right? Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, you were just like, mm. yeah, I, I just felt, I mean, I almost had to stop myself from kind of interrupting, yeah. but I felt I could have done that yes. at any time. Right. So it felt natural. Yes, it did. And that's what hypnosis feels like. When you want to know what hypnosis feels like, <laughs> it feels natural. It feels like you're just talking to me. You're just visualizing things. It doesn't feel like no. you're in a dream state or anything no, else. No, it just feels okay. very relaxing. It is very relaxing, physically relaxing. I, yeah. um, I always have back pain and that's just really gone. Yay. Maybe permanently after the healing, who knows? So right now we are in the UK. I'm in the London area right now. Yeah. And I'll be, when you see this, I will be back in Miami. So I won't be there when you see this. But um, if you want a session with me, go to my website, albaweinman.com. Click on hypnosis. Click on the tab that says newsletter. Sign up for my newsletter. And approximately once a month, not every single month, but approximately, a newsletter goes out, tells you where my new schedule is, where I'm going to be. I could be back home in Miami. I could be anywhere in the world. And if it's a place where you want to go to, click on that link on that calendar. The calendar comes up. If there is a date and time, the session is available. 
If there is no date and time, it's been booked, and they book very, very quickly, right? They do. Yeah. Very. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this one. This was very informative. It gave me a break on my throat. You did a lot of talking, so <laughs> thank you for watching. Until the next one. Bye. <laughs> Give me that hug. <laughs> oh.